Welcome to the West Wing Week, your guide to everything that's happening at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. But first, a brief message from the Secretary of Education, Arnie Duncan. This spring, the President, First Lady, and many cabinet officials have fanned out all across America delivering commencement addresses and being inspired by the class of 2010. Go to whitehouse.gov slash commencement to see an interactive map and find out where we went. You can even read the speeches or watch videos of many of these events. It's pretty cool. Hey, I hope this is pretty cool. I'm saying it's cool. Is it cool? It's pretty cool. Okay, then. This week, June 4th to June 10th, or Note to Self. On Friday, June 4th, the presidential motorcade headed up Route 50 to K. Neal International Trucks, a business in Hyattsville, Maryland, that's hired more employees as the economy has grown stronger in recent months. And now, you have these guys been training, and you got uh, teachers. There's some good teachers right here. They know trucks. Fantastic. After touring the facility, President Obama talked about the fifth straight month of job growth in America. The brightening employment picture is thanks in no small part to the Recovery Act and the man responsible for its implementation, Vice President Joe Biden. Joe deserves a lot of credit for that, so give Joe Biden a big round of applause. By the way, Joe says he used to be able to drive some of these trucks. But I, I would suggest, Steve, not not to lend him a car ride. That was a long time ago. On Friday, President Obama also made his third trip to the Gulf Coast to gauge the continuing federal response to the BP oil spill. He was greeted at the airport by local leaders before heading to the Tarmac Fieldhouse for a meeting. But I want BP to be very clear, they've got moral and legal obligations here in the Gulf for the damage that has been done. And what I don't want to hear is when they're spending that kind of money on their shareholders and spending that kind of money on TV advertising that they're nickel and diming uh, fishermen or small businesses here in the Gulf who are having a hard time. The president then traveled to Grand Isle to meet with local fishermen at Commerdell's Live Bait and Boiled Seafood. Now, you know this guy. You've been seeing him. Mayor, how you doing? I want you to know that uh, your mayor yeah. Uh, is a great advocate. The reason we're down here is because this guy uh, you know, talked to me about uh, some issues. We wanted to make sure that we were back down here and had a chance to talk to you guys directly. Yeah, it just going, keeps on going further to the north, to the back. So we have to have some kind of way to stop. Wounds are not working too much current. That's our problem. I will do everything in my power to, to do right by you guys and everybody along the coast. Even though I'm President of the United States, my power is not limitless. So I can't dive down there and plug the hole. I can't suck it up with a straw. Uh, all I can do is make sure that I put uh, honest, hardworking, smart people uh, in place like that to implement this thing. On Saturday, June 5th, the President stepped out to the Rose Garden to announce James Clapper as his choice to be the Director of National Intelligence. I'll be looking to Jim to ensure that we have the most capable and efficient intelligence community possible. Intelligence must be collected and analyzed quickly. It must be shared and integrated effectively. And it must be acted upon decisively. On Monday, June 7th, President Obama convened a meeting with members of his cabinet and senior administration officials to discuss what he saw during his visit to the Gulf Coast and reiterate his long-term commitment to those affected by the BP oil spill. This will be contained. It may take some time, and it's going to take a whole lot of effort. There is going to be damage done to the Gulf Coast, and there is going to be economic damages that we've got to make sure BP uh, is responsible for and uh, compensates people for. Uh, but the one thing I'm absolutely confident about is that, uh, as we have before, we will get through this crisis. Later that day, the President and Secretary of Education Arne Duncan traveled to Michigan to deliver the commencement address to the Giants of Kalamazoo Central High School. We're very proud of you. And you as well. We're very Absolutely. proud of you, sir. Thank yeah. you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, love, I was just watching the video on the way over here. Is that right? Absolutely. Good, good. Terrific. Before the formal ceremony, the President surprised the graduates by stopping in to say hello. So Kelsey was quoted as saying, 
we're the kind of school that never gets credit for what we do. And our school is amazing. This is what Kelsey said. Our school's amazing. Well, Kelsey, class of 2010, I'm here tonight because I know and America knows what you've done at Kalamazoo Central. You are amazing. On Tuesday, June 8th, the President and Health and Human Services Secretary Kathleen Sebelius visited the Holiday Park Multipurpose Senior Center in Wheaton, Maryland to hold a teletown hall with seniors and answer questions about the benefits for seniors in the health care reform bill, including a $250 rebate to help tens of thousands of seniors afford their prescription drugs. My husband asked me to give you a message. That's all, we, that's all you can do. Let me make sure my mic is working. Well, as I Secretary told you, Sebelius is going to be like Oprah. She's going to run the show here. But I can't give away cars, I'm afraid. Um. On Wednesday, June 9th, President Obama welcomed Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas to the White House to discuss a host of issues and underline the commitment of the United States to a Palestinian state that is independent, viable, and contiguous. Because we think it's important for us to reaffirm once again our commitment uh, to improving the day-to-day -day lives of ordinary Palestinians. Later, the president went to the diplomatic reception room to make a statement to the American people following the UN Security Council's vote on the toughest set of sanctions ever imposed on Iran. We recognize Iran's rights, but with those rights come responsibilities. And time and again, the Iranian government has failed to meet those responsibilities. On Thursday, June 10th, the president met with congressional leaders of both parties in the cabinet to discuss upcoming issues facing the country, including the situation in the Gulf and the need for a comprehensive energy bill to be passed soon. So let's get started. I know everybody's busy. We can't keep our, our, our eye off uh, the importance of having an energy policy that meets the needs of the next generation and ensures that the United States is the leader when it comes to energy policy. We are not yet that leader, uh, and that's what I want us to be. To find out more information on any of these topics or to see complete videos of these events, go to whitehouse.gov. And thanks again for checking out your West Wing week. Are you guys ready for a little bit of dunking here? You think yeah. so? Are people ready for this? I don't think anyone will be able to get me in the water. You know, I don't know, maybe, you know, if Congressman Schuler's here or Baron Hill, if he's here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Two. Oh. <laughs> there it is.